So this is the second look at vehicle animation. In the first one we did motion paths and we got some automated animation going with vehicles. In this one I want to bring in a lead car so that we can do some keyframe animation and that gives us a bit more flexibility on what we're working on. So I've downloaded this car here, logged in, downloaded and I've put this into my project. So now I can import the car which is this one and find that in my scene. There it is. So I'll just look at the scene here. Now it's actually a grouped vehicle so I'm going to select it from the in the outliner. Like I said last time if you go to Windows Outliner if you haven't got that window. If I don't select it in the outliner I may find that I just select one part of it. So if I wanted to move the car and just clicked on that I would find I've only selected the body and that's not ideal. Okay, So I'm going to select the, the group here and move it more into the position I want it on that bit of street. I also had this disk that came in with it so I'm going to select that and delete it. Uh, as you can see it's quite, le quite out of scale so I've actually looked at this previously so I'm going to just shrink it down to 0.5 on each of the scale parameters. Now I've pressed F. You can see I've got it slightly below the ground now. So you want to bring that up. And again, we want to make sure those wheels are just slightly under the ground. So move it for press F, then I can see where that is on the on the road there. Okay, so that's the start of this one. So I can bring that forward. My idea with this is to uh, frame it in the first camera here. So if I bring it back to this position and use that camera, camera one, I can see that it's right in the shot there. So I wanted to join that line of traffic. So I'm going to bring it forward. Now quite often I make the mistake of moving the cameras that I've set up. So camera one here I've set and staged. So I need to bookmark this. So I'm going to bookmark it there. I'm left clicking that bookmark so now if I do start editing in this window and moving around, um, I can actually get back to that by right clicking camera view and taking back to that position. The other thing we can do also is uh, we could press this button here, which is select camera, um, and we could press S on the keyboard. And that will set a keyframe. You can see there it's on zero. Um, so that means actually it's only got one keyframe. So when it actually starts playing again, it will jump back to that position. So different people work in different ways, but now if I move that, it will go back to the position of the keyframe, because that's the, that's the command of the keyframe. So in my main window here, I've got about a third, which is this foreground building. Um, I want to just work out where best to place that car and I want to have it going forward. I just need to remember which side of the road they go on as well. So I can come over here and have it slightly further back. If I do want to adjust that car, that, that camera now, I do need to be on the keyframe. So I'm going to jump back to the keyframe. I've selected it, jump back to the keyframe. And I may want to just move that slightly like that and press set again. Okay, so now I'm going to take a, a top-down view, so back in the perspective window here. Um, I'm going to start with the car, and I'm going to put keyframes on this group here. So if I zoom out slightly on this, it's zoomed all the way in, um, so that's where I'm working to. If I hold down the Alt and Middle click, I should be able to expand that slightly. So I have that group selected, I'll press S. I'm going to just give it a a little pause before it starts going um, and as that car goes by I want to get that moving up into the space that it's vacated. So I'll click on that timeline there, select the move tool and bring that forward towards the car there and press S. 
Okay, so once I've set that up, I'm then going to go on to work out how far along it is, because I want to do this in the minimal amount of keyframes, how far along I want that to travel. So I'll give it some space, and it's going to move out of shot, so I'm not too um, worried about how how much um, it moves, uh, or how much in shot it is, but I'll press S on the keyboard there. Uh, that obviously for me, I need to rotate that, um, and at this point, to zoom out slightly, it does need to be a rotation of 90. We'll just check that, but I will, I will just do uh, type in 90, and I can key select it. Um, going back to this point, I actually want to set up that rotation as well. How how to get from that uh, one position to another? So I'm actually going to keyframe this individual one to 90 also on that position. So I'll type 90. Uh, is that right? Key selected. And that jumps down. So that should give me uh, a rather wooden um, movement of the, the car there. But uh, it's going to have a reasonable, reasonably smooth speed as that goes through. So it's got that. It's going to stop and start. So I need to just work with these. Uh, it does stop there. I need to work with the tangents on these, or just moving the keyframe slightly to make these work properly. So this is my main camera. Uh, so this is the one I'm going to want to adjust or watch while I'm working. So to start with I'm going to drag back the rotation so it starts a little bit earlier and so we do get a slight turn there it's that stop that I don't like. I want it to keep traveling forward. So in this case, I'd need to look at the translate X and Z. So I'm selecting those only. Um, and it's a matter of one is starting and the other one's finishing. So what I really need to do is bring one slightly to the left and one slightly to the right. I've got them both there. Just undo that one. Um, so this one I need to bring slightly to the right. So there is a slight overlap on that. Again, I seem to have selected all the keyframes on that one. So shift and just bring that slightly to the right. So that way there should be some movement in each axis as it goes forward. So I'll just rewind that and play. See how I feel about that. Um, it's not too bad. It's not drifting too much, as in sliding sideways. Um, and I'll look at that from the top down view now as well. Uh, particularly zoomed in on that. So if I press F, I can see that quite close up. Uh, so it's possibly the axis. The axis is in the center of the car, so that does actually make it move in an odd way, but also check out the, the kind of velocity. So I think if I actually spin the back end of it round more as it comes around, so if the back end spins out as that happens, so that would really mean using these these tangents here. So uh, kind of squashing, flattening those out. Uh, so I want to overdo that tangent, bring it through and under, so it actually goes all the way around. So it's it's got more of a, a movement now. So it's around, uh, but it's, it's traveling further basically. And then this one will need a just a bit of a wobble to fix it, so it's, it's just flattening off a little bit too quickly. Um, again, breaking that tangent, and I'm getting quite close on that one. So if I frame those two, I should be able to see those very clearly. Um, if 
select that and it dips under, dips back, straightens up. Um, and that's a lot smoother. So just by working with the tangents, we can smooth this out a lot. Uh, maybe that we, we do want to have a bit more movement, keeping that velocity is the key thing but we're putting the velocity into the back of the car now um, and I can even just bring that one right down slightly to exaggerate what we're working on if I want to have that happening quicker or just look at the part that I'm working on I can trim this down just to play that bit that I want to see I think that'll work for this. It's a, it's a cartoon one. I'm just checking it doesn't hit the cars. Now, and what I've got here is quite a close um, position of those two cars. So one thing I might want to do, once I've got this, I'll save that animation. I might want to find the shot that shows that in the most dangerous way possible. So I want to make that look scary. So I need to find an angle that will show that in that way. And it may be that actually it's out here where I've got all these cars moving through the shot. Um, and I can save a bookmark for this as well. So I'll try this shot and there's a couple of things going on there. One. I'm masking that turn so you can't actually examine it particularly well but I've got that that car coming through joining the line of traffic and going on. I can't go much further back in this shot because of this wall um, and so what I am trying to do is keep that at quite a low level and I can see that come through and there's a, there's a busy you get the feeling of busy with that um, so that's one camera angle I can work on. Um, so again, once I've adjusted it, I'm going to press the book camera view. That's my first one, which is fairly good. And then the second one, which is slightly different, um, but equally works. It's kind of in the middle of the street here. Uh, but the danger, how do I sort of show that the closeness of this car um, it may be from a slightly different angle and be what actually that would be it but the buildings in the way uh, so there you could possibly get a really kind of scary angle on that so I'll try that one and so yeah, you're seeing it come in. You're not. Yeah, it's work it, working. This this staging to to make that work is is quite uh, quite difficult. And so that's one side. And then of course I try it from this side, so I can be in front of that car. Um, and that might also show it very very close. So that's. Okay, I want that kind of occluded look, or possibly just this, seeing both of them in the same shot. So that one there, I think may be uh, a good angle too, so you've got that. Uh, it's kind of getting a car going through the camera on that. Um, so you can see what what the options are. Um, but it's a matter of getting that drama in there and getting to understand where where that is. And of course, with the keyframe car, you can also add a camera to it. Um, so 
So if I create a camera, I can I can have the camera view of the car. I'm going to parent that into there. I used the middle mouse button and dragged it. So if you're not doing that, you can parent by selecting both items. Uh, and what I'm going to do is zero this because that should be then relative to the car. So that has gone right inside the car to that pivot point and um, then I can start working with that. I'm actually going to, in this case, look through the camera and uh, while I line it up. So if I have it following the car here, on this side of the car, I'll see more of a, a problem than if I have it on this side. So I've got the proximity of these two things, uh, two vehicles, and that low angle allows it to look like it's going to crash. Um, again, I'll bookmark that and play it through. So the bit I'm interested in is that bit, but then it's actually showing it too much. It's actually a strange angle on that one, so I don't actually like that camera angle. Um, I think uh, potentially closer, and the texture's not really rendering particularly brilliantly. Um, but I'll try that one as well. Uh, Yeah, so that is quite close on that one. So I think that's an improvement. Um, again, I've set this up for the main camera. Let me just press space, camera one, um, and that's really where where I was imagining this shot. And um, then I've also looked at the other potentials for that as well. So that's a look at keyframing and doing some more staging with a keyframing of a car. Again, use the least amount of keyframes as possible to set up the, the trajectory of the car and then adjust it in the, in the graph editor and you can get some good effects.